Hi, this is Dr. Frank with the Church of Rational Truth. Today we're going to talk about a coping mechanism that is very common, and I believe that a lot of times it's being misnamed or misused. Uh, the coping mechanism is rationalization, or basically using rational thought, logic, and reasoning uh, to come to conclusions or help solve a problem or to help cope with things. I think a lot of people use the term rationalization improperly when they say I'm trying to rationalize something or rationalize my own activities. I really believe they should probably use the term irrationalizing or not rationalizing uh, because generally a lot of times when people are referring to rationalization, they're actually using faulty logic, they're using faulty reasoning, jump circles in logic to try and get to a conclusion that they want, like a foregone conclusion that benefits them or benefits their thinking, usually so that they don't have to face a harsh reality or face, you know, something bad or do something bad. So they try to do mental gymnastics, which is actually the exact opposite of rationalization. If you were rationalizing truly, you'd come to logical true conclusions, generally the conclusions the people don't want to come to. Uh, so a lot of times they'll use the term rationalization as an excuse because, well, you know, it sounds better. It sounds like you're using logic and reasoning when really you're not. Um, so that's just a little pet peeve of mine. Uh, I wish people would use rationalization more as a coping mechanism because generally it's a good one. When I talk about coping mechanisms, I split them up between good, neutral, and bad coping mechanisms. And no coping mechanism, you know, falls 100% into good, neutral, or bad. It depends on the situation. That's generally what I tell people, and I usually want people to be able to analyze it and determine is this a good, neutral, or negative coping mechanism. Rationalization is generally good, but in many cases it can be neutral or bad. A lot of times true rationalization is bad if someone isn't actually getting to conclusions or the conclusions aren't something they could actually do anything about. Uh, some example that I would use for patients is COVID. COVID was very hard to rationalize. You can understand it, but you don't ever actually fix that coping mechanism no matter how much you understand it or think about it. Many times that extra thinking or that extra rationalization even if logical, since it's not coming to conclusions that will fix the problem, that can just end up increasing anxiety. So sometimes in those situations, rationalization really isn't the best coping mechanism, especially when it doesn't come to a conclusion that makes things better. But if used properly, hopefully it will allow a person to come to a true logical conclusion that can help them cope with whatever problem they're dealing with. That is good, proper rationalization. Irrationalization probably ends up doing the opposite. It usually ends up holding that person back or letting them stay in a rut because they're using that false logic to allow them to keep making bad decisions or not truly fix their problems. Uh, like, for example, uh, I put off something because I can always do it tomorrow. Doing it today is not going to make any difference, so I can put it away to, till tomorrow. It's not going to make a change in things. That's rationalized, but it's missing some key details, like is there any benefit to doing it now versus later? Uh, is there a detriment to keep putting it off? Does it mean that you're going to keep putting it off? So someone can do some gymnastics to try and make that seem like it's a logical conclusion, when really it's just their foregone conclusion that they want to get to, so they try to make logic that then backs up their decision making. Real logic and reasoning doesn't have a foregone conclusion, or at least it shouldn't. It should kind of just use logic and reasoning to determine if something is good or bad, or even just to be able to weigh good and bad objectively, uh, versus that kind of rationalization. It's already kind of trying to move towards a foregone, not always, but it's usually trying to go towards a foregone conclusion that the person wants, rather than the foregone, con rather than the conclusion that is done truly from being rational. Um, so. I think that's really there is to say about that. I could probably go on and drone on, but that's the gist of it. Uh, the way I think people should take this is to try to understand when they're being rational and when they're being irrational in their thinking and their analyzing and their, their coping mechanisms. If you're trying to be irrational, why are you trying to be irrational? What are you protecting yourself from? What, what are you trying to do that is to your benefit that might actually not be towards your benefit? Versus when are you really rationalizing? The hard thing is really rationalizing sometimes doesn't give us the conclusions we want. It gives us conclusions that are sometimes more harsh or less fun or more difficult. But that is what can often happen with true rationalization versus someone who is being irrational or irrationalizing something. So keep that in mind when you're thinking through things. Always say, am I doing this because this is a truly rational decision? Or am I doing this because this is something irrational that I kind of want to be true? 
that's it for today's lecture. Thank you so much for listening. This is Dr. Frank again with the Church of Rational Truth, signing off.